All right, everybody, we're back. Uh, we're on day two. Uh, thank you for going through the notes yesterday. Um, I know that by the end they were getting a little bit confusing. Fair enough. Or maybe they were too easy. I don't know, you guys are really smart. Here's what I was thinking. Today I wanted to do three solid examples. One in series, one in parallel, and then when it gets interesting, one in combination. The first one's really easy, but I wanna take the time to show you how to do it so that when you go and um, have to apply to the combination ones, it makes sense. Uh, so here's what I need you to do. Take out a piece of paper. If you don't have a piece of paper, push pause and go get one. Yeah, that means you guys, good. All right, so here is where we're gonna start. And again, I might take a break after I read these and you can hit pause. Uh, circuit notes, day two, series, parallel, and combo. This is the key. If you guys understand this, these two statements, then you will be able to handle circuits. Number one, the current flows through a resistor. It does not get used up. It doesn't get used up. This is in accordance with the conservation of charge. Second, it says the voltage drops across the resistor. The potential, oops, I could probably use another quotation mark there, um, decreases each time it crosses a resistor until at the end of the circuit it is equal to zero. This is in accordance with the conservation of energy. If you need to, hit pause, take a moment and write those two statements down. All right, now if you're back, I wanna just throw slightly different vocabulary with this. Uh, this first one, uh, you'll sometimes see it referred to as Kirchhoff's loop rule. <laughs> no, it's not. It's known as Kirchhoff's Junction Rule. Jeez, I hope you don't fast forward too much of this. And basically it says that the current into any junction is equal to the current out of any junction. Essentially the conservation of charge has to be true. Uh, the second one is known as Kirchhoff's, and I wish Joel was here to pronounce it for us in Russian, but Kirchhoff's loop rule, which says that the sum of the volts around any loop is equal to zero. So with that, I just wanted to throw that vocabulary and we use that more next year in AP2. But um, here it goes. So we're gonna start with a very simple circuit. I think it will take about one page. It did when I wrote it out and uh, we'll see how it goes. Do not just skip ahead to the answer. You know that. So we're going to start with two resistors that are in parallel. We're going to use our symbol for a power supply and then our symbol for two resistors. And then we're going to complete the circuit using wires of zero resistance. Um, the values I'm going to use are 12 ohms for the first resistor and 24 ohms for the second and the power supply, or it could be a battery either one is going to have a value of eight volts. Stop, slow down. Don't give the answer already. I know you're doing it, relax, it's all good. Now, when I face a problem like this, what I need to do is I need to find the equivalent resistance. Or maybe I'll start writing the resistance total. Now, because these are in series, this is just gonna be add them together. Resistance in series is 12 plus 24 equals 36 ohms. So in fact, this circuit really behaves as if it's just one 36 ohm resistor. Check, check. Good. Now you'll notice the numbers came out easy. That was intentional. But before you jump ahead and get an answer, I want to go to an extended analogy. When I think of circuits, and when I think of electrical current and electrical potential, I like to go back to sitting beside a waterfall. Um, I can imagine in, in college woods at UNH, there's a, a, used to be a small power plant. Beautiful, it had, had pine trees on one side, pine trees on another. You could sit on the edge of the waterfall, it was cool. Um, now the thing is, there was a potential difference due to gravity in a waterfall 
from the top to the bottom. Down at the bottom, if we, because with potential, you can set it equal to zero, wherever you want. I'm going to set the bottom potential at zero. And let's say at the top, it's going to be eight. Now, in my analogy here, this is where I'm going to switch over and start using electrical terms. Let's say it's eight volts at the top and zero volts at the bottom. If we imagine those resistors are of, as um, tubes that the water travels through, and as it does that, it uses up some of its potential. Now, earlier today, I had, a, I had an insight that, you know, I was walking into my house and my younger daughter had one of those pinwheels out in front stuck into the grass kind of frozen in place now. And the pinwheel takes energy from the wind and turns it. You could imagine, that's a pinwheel by the way, a pinwheel inside each one of these as the water travels over it, it turns. Oh, what is that similar to? Oh yeah, like a turbine. Anyway, that's gonna change the electric potential into well, in this case, it'd be electricity, but um, with resistors, it's thermal energy. So if we've got 8 volts, 12 ohms, 24 ohms, look at the path of the current. The current clearly has to pass through both resistors. It's the only path for the electricity to follow. Therefore, the current is the same in each resistor. Now, I know that a minute ago, you guys already understood that. But if you want to be able to really internalize it, boom, there it is. Now, if the current passes through each resistor, you have to think of what is the voltage drop across each resistor. So in order to do that, I'm going to redraw my circuit as a waterfall. Here we go. I knew you guys were all thinking this song. So we're going to play that in the background while I work through the rest of this problem here. When I redraw things as a waterfall, I'm going to start at the top oops, at, at 8 volts. You know what the best part is? You guys may not even know this song. Sorry, I'm getting old. This used to be my attempt at being cool and understanding pop culture. And now I think this was maybe from the 90s. Don't look it up. I'm pretty sure it was old. When I redraw it as a waterfall, I then, it's so clear to me that all of the current has to pass through both of these resistors. So I added them in series. They're acting as 36 ohms. Let's go ahead and find the total current. Um, to find the total current, the easiest thing to do, wait for it. Oh, wait, I guess I don't really remember the song that well. Wait, here it comes. I don't have a way to edit this. Sorry, guys, going back to the school. Now, if we do the voltage total equals the current total times the resistance total, I do VT over RT equals I, because the current depends upon the voltage where we left off. So I'm going to have 8 volts divided by 36 ohms. And if I take my calculator and do that, the actual answer for that is 0.222 amps. I'll just keep the answer in my calculator and roll with it from there. Now to find the voltage drop across each one of these, it's actually pretty easy. To find the voltage drop across the 12 ohm, it's going to be the total current times that resistance, because the total current has to pass through it. So 0 0.2222 222 times 12 gives me 2.66-ish volts. Now, some of you already know what the other voltage is going to be, don't you? Oh, God, you guys are smart. But let's check it out anyway. Now, to find the voltage across the 24 uh, volt, uh, sorry, the 24 ohm resistor. Let's do uh, 0.2222 times 24. It's going to give me 
Oh, that's right, 5.33 volts. Now here's the beautiful, beautiful part of this. What that tells us is that together, 2.66 plus 5.33 means that the voltage drop across both of the resistors together is going to be 8 volts. Check, check. That's going to be Kirchhoff's loop rule right there. The sum of the volts is going to be equal to the voltage drop total. Now, um, what I've done is I went and checked down a FET and I set up a circuit. Here it is. If I show some labels and some values, I already had plugged in the values for it. I want to show the conventional current and we can see that it flows from the positive terminal all the way around uh, and completes a circle. Let's see if I can write on this. Yeah, maybe not. Um, if I take my voltmeter and I drag it out, if I connect it before this first resistor, and then after, hey, look at that, 2.67. And if I measure the voltage drop across this resistor, 5.33. The voltage drop across just a section of wire. Oh, is zero because we are assuming that the wires have zero resistance. And if I go from the positive terminal all the way around to the negative terminal, what do I get for a voltage drop? I guess I got to put it up here. Eight volts. Check, check. That looks pretty well. Oh, I'm leaving dots all over, aren't I? Hmm. Well, <laughs> if I take the ammeter and I drag it around, what do I see? I see that I got 0 0.22, 0 0.22. Hey, the current stays the same all the way around. Let's do another example. So let's take those two same two resistors, and this time, let's put them in parallel to each other. So we've got some numbers written out here, so I don't do any dumb calculator errors. Um, take a moment. Now would be a good time to pause if you need a short break. I'm going to keep going. I'm going to start off with uh, eight ohm power supply, and this time we're going to hook up our two resistors of 12 ohms and 24 ohm in parallel with each other. We're going to have 8 volts. Now, I need to, my first step is always to find the equivalent resistance. This time, because they're in parallel, over RP equals 1 over 12 plus 1 over 24. Um, just to sort of, so we got 328, so that's going to be 1 8. And then I know you know this. I know you do. I know. But I take the reciprocal at the end, and I end up with a resistance equivalent of 8 ohms. So I'm going to go ahead and draw that. Oh, 8 volts. Not chill. Relax. I know that you know the current is 1. Relax. It's an example. Now, all right, we're back. So I'm going to draw this as a waterfall. And when I do that, I'm going to start with my 8 volts of potential at the top. And then before it goes through any resistor, it's going to branch. And I can see that if I were to maybe highlight at the top as I go around. I literally take my pen or pencil. Yep, I use this one. And I literally drag it around the circuit and then it branches. I'm going to show that branch down below my waterfall. Then there's two paths that the electricity could pass through. It could either pass through the 12 ohm resistor or it could pass through the 24 ohm resistor. Now, as I go, the current's gonna flow. It's not going to flow back up this way. Nope, that's not the way it goes. The potential, the potential difference is going to cause the electricity to flow this way. Zero. When it goes through the 24 ohm resistor, it's not going to swim back up. It's not salmon. It's not swimming back upstream. It's going to go down to the bottom. So if I go back to my, my, my waterfall here, boom, 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 salmon. I didn't use that before. 
I draw the equivalent resistance or the equivalent uh, waterfall, I'm going to be looking at 8 ohms and down to 0. Now, this is the part that I think is really important to understand. Now, the total current we can find very simply the voltage total equals the current total times the resistance. Total voltage is 8 volts. Total resistance is 8 ohms. So the current, which I know you already knew, is going to be 1 amp. That means 1 amp is going to flow through the circuit. And here's the kicker. When we look at it this way, 1 amp goes into the branch, but then it splits. I'll call this one I1 and this one I2. <laughs> Obviously, we can't have one amp through each one of those branches. What that would mean is that, like, uh, current suddenly was created. That, that doesn't happen. You've got to use conservation of charge. So it is going to split. So how the heck do you solve it? You don't know the current. But I you do know the voltage drop. If you were to think about the path of some of this current, some of it is going to come down and follow this path to ground. Other parts of the current are going to come down and split and follow this path down to the ground or down to zero volts. So, what do I see? I see that the voltage drop across one of these has to be 8 volts. It's the total for the entire circuit. And that's the key. Which one has a greater voltage drop across it, the 12 ohm or the 24 ohm? That's right, Hayes. They have the same. Nice job. Both of them are going to be eight. If I were to go back to my analogy, because the whole point of this is to get it so we can understand harder problems. We're sitting out in college woods at UNH. Here's the waterfall. Here's the pine trees. Ah, there's the waterfall. Now, our two resistors, our 12 and our 24, are side by side over that 8 volt drop. So now, each one of those clearly would have the 8 volts to it. So if we know that, finding the current is going to be really easy. Um, yeah, I think I'm going to write that down in words. And then actually do the math. Each resistor has a voltage drop, has the same voltage drop across it. And since they're the only resistors in the circuit, that is, that's going to be the voltage drop. Yeah. There's the yellow, there's the blue, oh, and together at the end they need green, which isn't the color of water, but I'm going to So, let's see, uh, boom, 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 find the current for each one of those. Can you do that? To find the current. There we go. To find the current. each have a voltage of 8. 8 divided by 12 is going to give you the current through that one, or 0.667 amps. You find the current through the other resistor. You're going to have 8 divided by 24. It's going to be 0 0.333 amps. <gasps> ding, 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 ding! And if you look at it, those two currents, what do they add up to? One. And that current actually splits. And 0.67 flows through the 12 ohm, and the 0.33 travels through the 24 ohm. Now, I just want to point out, even though I know you, it's obvious, 
You've heard the statement since you were a little kid, electricity flows through the path of least resistance. That is true. So more electricity or more current flows through the 12 ohm resistor, but not all of it. Once that, once that current is flowing, some of it is still easier for some of it to go through the 24 ohm. Uh, the point is this, more current flows through the smaller or the less resistance. Okay, cool. Uh, let's go and uh, see if I think I've got it set up already. And if we look at the values, so there's our power supply, here's our values. If we show conventional current and I take my voltmeter and if I replace it before and after the 12 ohm resistor, what do I get? A voltage drop of eight. If I put it on the wires, oh, same thing. Now, if I move it over to the 24 ohm, oh, 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 oh he's is eight again. So the voltage is the same across each one of those. If I take the current or my ammeter and I measure it right here, the total current flowing out is going to be one amp, but watch. One amp, one amp, one amp, one amp, one amp, one amp. One amp, one amp, one amp. There it changes. Now it's 0 0.67, 0 0.33. That was the fork in the road. After this. 24 ohm resistor, it's still 0.33, still, still, still 0.333. Ah, and then it adds together. The streams combine. Go back over. I think you guys totally get that. I'm going to hit pause. We got one more of these. And then you're through with your Thursday. How do I pause it again? All right, part three. Who would have known it would take that long to get through two problems? Uh, if you're fast forwarding at points, I kind of understand on this one, I'm going to ask that you don't, if you get this, you've got it. And then we're, then we're golden. So, um, uh, while I'm talking here, I'm assuming you guys are writing down this circuit. I think the numbers are going to work nicely. Knock on wood. We've got a 12 volt power supply. And this time we have a circuit where it all passes through a four ohm resistor first. Then we have a three and a six ohm that are in parallel with each other. So my first step as always is to find the equivalent resistance. Now, once I get to circuits that are a little bit trickier like this, I think it works better is if I go straight to my waterfall. Can you guys hear it right now? You can chase waterfalls, it's okay. So if I start at 12 volts and what I do is I literally with my pen, I wish if I was in front of the class, I'd be holding a whole set of markers stuck together. And I would say, starting here, you trace the path and look, it all has to go through the four ohm resistor. So starting at 12, it's going to all go through the four ohm resistor. And then there's a branch. And some of it goes through this three, and some of it goes through the six. So I go back. Now, it doesn't matter that the three looks like it's before. The, it's not. It's not before the six in any sense of it. It is its own branch. And if I had drawn them on the opposite side, they would behave exactly the same. I know why you're thinking it. The three does not come before the six. And then it gets down to zero. We got it. So now, can we find the equivalent of that? Of course we can. The three and the six are in parallel. So I'm going to do this in steps. So one over resistance in parallel, one over three plus one over six. Even I can do that, I think. Uh, two, six plus one, six is three, six. Oh, yeah. And then don't forget. And I end up with a resistance of the parallel part of the circuit as two ohms. So I can redraw my waterfall this time. And I know I could combine these steps, but I'm not going to yet. I've got four ohms, two ohms, 12 volts, 
zero volts, and I know you've already started to redraw this equivalent circuit with six ohms of resistance. Sure. Now, oh, look at those numbers. It's like somebody thought of them ahead of time for one. If I look, what would the current be, the total current of the circuit? Yeah, that's right. V equals IR. I can find that easily. Um, you know what? For space, I'm going to go up here. I'm going to find the total current. To find the total current, I can use the total voltage drop equals the total current times the total resistance. So 12 divided by 6 means that my total current is going to be 2 amps. Now here it is. Yeah, I'm going to wave my hands if you're fast forwarding. Okay, this is the point. 2 amps is the total current that flows through the circuit. That means when I go to my waterfall right here, 2 amps has to flow through the first resistor. It has to, like, where, how else is it going to go through the circuit? So if we have 2 amps flowing through that 4 ohm resistor, what is the voltage drop going to be across the 4 ohm resistor? It's actually not very hard. So I'm going to ask the question, what is the voltage drop across the 4 ohm resistor? Well, the voltage drop is going to be the current through it times the resistance, or I, I know you guys can do the math. Nice job. It's 6, right? No, wait. Just kidding. 2 times 4 is going to give us 8 volts. What that means is that from here to here, the voltage dropped 8 volts. Now, clearly the current splits. And I'm going to have I1 and I2. How does it split? Well, it depends on what the resistances are. Now, when I look at that 2 amps, if 8 volts drops, see, this is where I wish I was in front of the board. If 8 volts drops, 8 volt drops through the first resistor, how much is left? If 8 drops here, then there's only going to be 4 volts left. If we look at this side of the circuit, it drops from 12, it drops down 8, leaving us 4 volts for this resistor. If I look at current that traveled on the other side, it dropped down from 12, it dropped 8, leaving 4 volts on this side. They're going to have equivalent voltages. Now, to find the currents for those, let's check it out. So to find the current, Through the 3 ohm resistor, I guess that doesn't need a question mark, does it? Find the current through the 3 ohm resistor. It's going to be, if the voltage drop is 4 and the resistance is 3, then the current, which is V over R, is going to be 4 thirds or 1.33 amps. Now, if I do find the current through the 6 ohm, I could do it two different ways. I could use that the current is going to be the same 4 volt drop over 6 and give me 0.67 amps. Or I could have said the total current in the circuit will be equal to I1 plus I2. And the total current, we already found that to be 2 amps. We found I1 to be 1.33. Therefore, I2 is going to be 0.67 amps. Ding, ding, ding! Isn't that nice? Like, it works. And if I take the 1.33 and 0.67, add them together, I get 2 amps. Like, it all works. If I go back to my waterfall one last time, here it is. Here's the pine trees, some on the far bank, some on the near bank. Maybe this time there's some other people. Nah, I'll save it. But if we look at the voltage drop, the total voltage drop in this problem was 12 volts from top to bottom. 
and this time the current passed through one resistor and had a drop of eight all the way down and then went into the other two together. So we each a voltage of zero volts. I don't know if that helps. It helps me. I hope you guys do it okay. If you were able to make it through those videos, I'm impressed.